So we will talk about the definition of protein, the chemistry of protein and the classification of protein. So let's start from the definition. How will we define the proteins? Very simple. Polymer of amino acid is actually called as protein. Now what do we mean by the polymer of amino acid? When several number of amino acid monomers join together, they will make a structure. That structure is called protein. So this is the very to the point and simple definition of protein. Now let's move towards the chemistry. In the chemistry, we will talk about the amino acid structure. Amino acid. Now what is amino acid? Very simple. Such molecule which contains amino group and acidic group is known as amino acid. And here is the molecule. This molecule contains the acidic group known as carboxylic acid and the amino group which are attached with a carbon, central carbon known as alpha carbon to which one hydrogen and a side chain here is represented by the alkyl function group. So this is the general structure of amino acid and the amino acids that we classify which are 20, 10 essential and 10 non-essential. These amino acids do not exist in this shape. They exist in ionic shape. And that ionic shape is given the name Zwitter ion. Now what is Zwitter ion? When within a molecule, the proton shifting happens and the molecule turns to ionic shape, then that is known as Zwitter ion. So here, our carboxylic acid and amino group. Now within this amino acid molecule, the shifting of proton will happen from the carboxylic acid towards the amino. And then this amino acid will become charged amino acid, which is known as Zwitter ion. So proton, when it shifts from the carboxylic acid towards the amino, what will happen? Here, carboxylic acid will become COO negative and the proton will move from the carboxylic acid towards the amino. And what will happen? NH2 will be converted into NH3 positive. This ionic structure is known as Zwitter ion and this is the actual existence form of the amino acid. Now let's move towards the classification. The proteins are classified into three major groups. The very first one, the proteins are classified on the basis of function. Number two, on the basis of the chemical nature or solubility. And number three, on the basis of nutritional values. And now you people might be thinking that what is one, two, three, four, and five here? These are actually the steps that I will follow in making you people understand about the classification. So let's start from the function, the very first one. On the basis of function, the proteins are further classified into two, static and dynamic. Static, it stands for standing. And dynamic, when something is in motion, or if something changes continuously, or if something is possessing several functions. So static are the actually the structural proteins. These are the proteins that are helping in structure formation. These are playing the role of like a brick and mortar. You know when you people are building a wall or a building. So for that you people need brick and mortar. Then you can build the structure, the building. According to human body, we need these collagen, elastin and keratin to make the hard structural and standing support for our body. And dynamics include enzymes which are protein in nature and they are performing several functions in the body and actinomycin the proteins which are helping us in motion and receptors which are helping in, in receiving the signal from the atmosphere and then transferring that signal inside the cell in order to perform a specific job and the genetical proteins like histones which are responsible for genetics and defensive proteins these are the proteins that are playing defensive role in the body means they are helping fight against the foreign germs example is immunoglobulins IgG, A, M, E etc. So this is all about the function classification. Now let's move towards the chemical nature. According to chemical nature, we classify the proteins into three major groups. The very first one is simple. When our proteins are only made up of amino acids, then those proteins are known as simple proteins. So simple proteins are further divided into globular and scleroproteins. Globular proteins are globular in shape, spherical in shape. Examples are the albumin, globulin and histones. And one thing that you must know about these is that all the proteins you must check the dietary supplements that include these proteins. It will be very beneficial for you people in future. The next one is scleroproteins. These are the hard proteins which are only made up of the amino acids like collagen, elastin, alpha-keratin. We discussed these here also. 
And the next one is the conjugated proteins. Now, what is conjugated? Conjugated means when something extra is joined with your protein. Protein and something extra. Now, what is something extra? Other moiety. Now, we will know through the examples. Glycoprotein, the very first one. When carbohydrate is attached with the protein, it is called as glycoprotein. And the mucoprotein, the same, when the carbohydrate is attached with the protein. Now, what is the difference between the glycoprotein and mucoprotein? The only difference is the percentage of the carbohydrate. If carbohydrate attached with the protein is less than 4%, then that is known as glycoprotein. And if the carbohydrate attached with the protein is more than 4%, then that is known as mucoprotein. Got? Carbohydrate percentage. If it is less than 4 attached with the protein, that is called as glycoprotein. And if carbohydrates attached with the protein are more than 4%, then that is known as mucoprotein. And the next one is the lipoprotein. Very simple. When the lipids are attached with the protein, that is called as lipoprotein. Examples are the LDL, HDL, VLDL, IDL, etc. Phosphoprotein. When a phosphate is attached with the protein. Example, casein. Chromoprotein. When a colored substance is attached with the protein. Like hemoglobin. Metalloprotein, when any metal is attached with a protein, that is called as metalloprotein. Examples are the ceruloplasmin and carbonic anhydrase. Ceruloplasmin contains copper attached with the protein and carbonic anhydrase, zinc attached with a protein. The next one is the nucleoprotein. When DNA and RNA is attached with a protein, that is called as nucleoprotein. And the example is the histones attached with your DNA. The next one is derived proteins. The name is telling you now that what kind of proteins are they? Derived. The derived term means taken from. So these proteins are actually taken from or obtained from the simple and conjugated proteins. And derived proteins are of further two types, primary and secondary. So we obtain these proteins, whether it is primary or secondary, by several ways. We do the hydrolysis or we give the heat or we do the enzymatic reactions or we add any kind of acid with these simple and conjugated proteins. And these protein split to the primary and secondary derived proteins. So when we apply the heat, what will happen? The heat coagulated protein, example, when you take an egg, when you boil it, so the albumin that is present in the egg. This is called as primary derived protein. Proteins which are obtained by the enzymes. And the enzyme reacts with the protein. So like this, what will happen? The product will be the primary derived example is the fibrinogen when it is converted into fibrin by an enzyme. Beta proteins. These proteins are the primary derived proteins which are obtained after reacting the acid or alkali with our simple and conjugated proteins. And the secondary are the peptides, polypeptides, peptones and proteoses. So these are the primary and secondary. So like this we completed our simple conjugated and derived classification which is the chemical nature classification of the proteins. Now let's move towards the third one, nutritional classification. Now on the basis of nutrition we further classify the proteins into three major types. The very first one is called complete proteins, partially complete, second one, the third one is incomplete. Very simple. When you are taking any diet, in that diet, if there is 10 out of 10 amino acid available, then that protein diet is known as complete protein. Examples are the KZ. Complete protein is the protein that contains 10 out of 10 amino acids. Example is the casein and albumin. And the partially complete proteins are the those proteins which also contain 10 out of 10 amino acids, but either one, two or more than two amino acids, their concentration is not complete. And the third one, incomplete. Now these protein diet, they are missing one or more amino acid completely. So now how many amino acids will be available in our incomplete uh, proteins? There will be 7, 8 or 9 out of 10 amino acids. And in the partial and complete, we will have 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 in the complete, 10 out of 10 in the partial and in the incomplete will be missing either 1, 2 or more than 2 amino acids.